So I've been really anticipating doing the review on this bike, but there's been a new version pending, which is finally here. And this is it. This is the Urban Arrow family, or the new Urban Arrow family, as they call it now, the UA4 model, which has some slight differences from the previous version. But this bike has always been very popular in our shops. It's it's just a, a good all-round bike for carrying your kids. It's got all sorts of different accessories for it. It's got the Bosch motor, which you know we're a big fan of, now updated with the new Generation 3 performance line on the standard version, or this one has the cargo line, which is the, the most amount of torque at 85 Newton meters, 65 Newton meters on the performance line. This is a front loader cargo bike. You just load in the front. There's all sorts of space up here. You can put kids up here, pets. You could put uh, up to four kids, so two kids in this seat, another two kids in this seat. You could potentially put another kid in the back if you wanted to. You got all sorts of different options for this and that makes it you know a pretty versatile and and it's one of the more economical choices because it, it really gives you a complete package for a front loader at six thousand dollars for the performance version and seven thousand dollars for the cargo line version which has some upgraded parts on it like the brakes and the motor and the lights and stuff like that but you know to be able to start out at six thousand and like have a bike that you can just throw your kids in and, and get around and that it's a safe and fun way to get around. I, I think it's a, it's a good way to go. So we actually did a video on Urban Arrow uh, a little over a year ago when we were in the Netherlands. We got to visit them and we just learned more about the company and went to go visit their production facility in the Netherlands. They have their heritage just like this is the bike. This is a, an evolution of the initial bike that they introduced, but really there's, there's some updates, but for the most part, uh, the, the basics are the same. You know, they have this EPP box with the metal frame around it, the low step frame, the, the upright seating position, which is very classic Dutch style, low maintenance, internally geared hub. This one has disc brakes. Historically, they've done some with the uh, roller brakes, but pretty much all the bikes that we offer here in the US are gonna have the disc brakes on them. Overall, it's, it's a really, easy bike to get going on you know just anyone can hop on it and and ride some people might be really intimidated with this style of bike with this big box in the front but the reality is it, it's pretty easy to handle you can see exactly where you're going uh, you know one thing I will note if you're ever riding one of these bikes don't psych yourself out and just try to like think where you're gonna turn because actually if you turn right there's a, a, a weird thing it's called counter steer what ends up happening is you actually turn left a little bit before you turn right and so if you try to go right and you just turn right you're probably gonna like just get you know out of balance or you might fall or something like that so just you want to look where you want to go and let your arms do the rest there but overall this bike's a great fit for many different riders I mean it could fit very short riders which is really beneficial I mean the saddle can go way down I'd say somewhere in the like high like four foot four eleven five foot somewhere in that area and upwards of six five six six um, really without trouble I mean you could potentially ride it if you're a bit taller the shorter riders I think at a certain point you're gonna you, you might be able to ride it but you're probably gonna have to hop off the saddles to stop this bike's not really designed to do that so much I mean in an ideal scenario you're sitting on the saddle and you can still put your feet on the ground right now it's a little bit higher because it's on the kickstand but the idea is that you can stabilize the bike and that's partly based on the way that the frame is designed because it has this angled seat tube here it allows for a shorter distance to the ground which really ultimately makes it easier to stabilize the bike and that's really helpful when you're carrying cargo it's available in two different colors this is the black color it's also available in like a gloss white color as I said, loads of different accessories come set up by default to carry two kids in, in the standard seat with, with seat belts and that sort of thing. But you can have uh, another bench up front. You can put an additional larger kid or potentially a small adult. So the bike can carry over 200 pounds in the box up front, but really the overall capacity of the rider and the box and everything like that, it's about 500 pounds. So it's pretty significant. I mean, I'm about, 200 pounds and and I've had riders carry me up front we actually use this bike quite a bit to 
uh, film with sometimes. We actually film some of the B-roll for this specifically with another Urban Arrow. And actually sometimes we've even rented it out to different like filmmakers and that sort of thing. You know, but probably the most common passengers are generally gonna be kids. That's what we see most people opting for this bike for that purpose. So for the wheels on the bike, we have a 20 inch wheel in the front and a 26 inch wheel in the rear. The 20 inch wheel allows the bucket to be a bit lower, have a lower center of gravity and makes it so the bike's not quite as long. Now, uh, both of the tires are this Schwabi Big Bend Plus, which is a good, just versatile all round tire. It's got good tread to it, kind of can handle most terrain that you throw at it, but it's really primarily an urban type tire, but it can handle some looser stuff there. Now it's a plus style tire, so it has this additional puncture protection, which is really nice and something important considering this is a cargo bike. You don't really want to be fussing with that so much. And it's also a balloon tire. And balloon tire means that it can run at lower pressure. So basically has a thicker sidewall on it, something a little bit closer to like how motorcycles or car tires, they have a thicker sidewall so they can run at lower pressure. And that's really nice also because you don't have suspension on here. It's got a rigid front fork. The tire can provide a lot of comfort there. So you run at a lower pressure and you know, that's gonna be more comfortable. Outside of that, you have the, the fenders. It's kind of like a polycarbonate plastic fender. And then you can see this is the steering arm here. So you can see how that basically controls the bike and, and the steering moves that way. For the drivetrain on the Urban Aero family, you have the Enviolo cargo version. So this is a continually variable transmission, but more specifically, this version is a little bit upgraded from some of the other ones, and it's made to be able to handle the additional force of, of some of these more powerful motors like this one has on it. You also find that same drivetrain on the performance line version. Now, the continually variable transmission, basically it works um, continuously instead of having indexes similar to like a normal drivetrain where you have like 10 or nine or 11 speeds. This one, instead you kind of adjust things more gradually. So that's really nice because you can really dial in your pedal cadence to exactly what you want it to be. It's also nice that you can shift the bike when you're at a stop. Um, different things like that. But overall, it's just a very low maintenance, really easy to use system. And I find that it's very fitting for this type of bike and it's quite popular for cargo bikes in particular. Now, you might also notice this kind of like plastic casing here. And this is what's called like a chain case or more specifically, it's called a chain glider and it's made by a company called Hebe. Now, Urban Arrow has been using this for a while. It's something that's relatively common on Dutch bikes in that you can use a chain, but still really improve the uh, service interval. So uh, because the chain is not exposed to the elements, it doesn't get as dirty and it can stay clean and really lasts a lot longer. So it's a nice alternative to a belt, although there is an option to actually add a belt as an upgrade if you wanted to. So another update to this frame in particular is these new dropouts. So these are kind of like removable dropouts and they, they're sliding. So make it a little bit easier to maybe use a belt drive if you wanted to. As, as I mentioned, that's a, an option there. And if they ever got damaged or something like that, they could be replaced. But overall, it's just kind of a little bit slight improvement to the design. And that's something that's included on all of the new uh, UA4 uh, design, which I guess is like kind of the fourth generation. But many other uh, aspects of the bike remain relatively the same, but this is one of those little details that you're gonna see is a little bit different. So another big update for this new Urban Arrow is the motor offering. So this one is the cargo line version. It really has the most amount of torque at 85 Newton meters. And they also have it available in the standard performance line version with 65 Newton meters of torque. And really the variance there is you're just going to feel a little bit more pep off the line. Both of them have that same top speed, which is limited to 20 miles an hour in the U.S or I should say North America, but you might find other jurisdictions where it might be limited to uh, 25 kilometers per hour is more like 15.5 miles per hour. So as I mentioned, this is the Bosch cargo line. You can see it here. The other version is the performance line. Now these are technically different generations, but they're actually kind of both like the most current models of the motor. Uh, the generation really more speaks to just the form factor of the motor. So the performance line is a generation three because of the form factor. 
uh, where this one's Generation 4 because it was just introduced later. Now I would note that the Generation 4 does have more torque as I mentioned before, but otherwise the performance is very similar. All their motors use a technology called pedal assist and they have very advanced sensors which enable the motor to provide assistance to you while you're pedaling. And really, even with the largest of loads, you can move things along pretty quickly. Now they have two sensors inside the motor. One is a torque sensor and it's sensing how hard you're pedaling. There's another sensor that senses how fast you're pedaling or a cadence sensor. And then there's a sensor on the rear wheel that senses how fast the bike is going overall. Based on all this information, that's how it provides assistance. For the battery on the bike, we have the Bosch Power Pack 500, which generally is going to get you somewhere between 25 and 50 or so miles. I mean, you might see the range vary depending on your load and the terrain and that sort of thing, but that's also going to vary depending on what assistance level you ride at. You know, if you ride at the highest level of assistance, you're going to see that lower number. If you ride at a very low level of assistance and perhaps at a lower speed you're going to see that range uh, shoot up pretty significantly. This you can charge it on the bike through this port here. You can also charge it off the bike. Uh, in order to remove the from the bike you need to use the key. It actually does use the same key for this uh, frame lock that it has on the bike. So uh, in order to actually remove the key on the frame lock you actually have to lock it and it also has a, a little port on the side that you can add a chain lock to it as well which is really nice you might also notice that this thing kind of moves a little bit like that and the idea is if you ever forget to unlock it and you take the bike off the kickstand it's not going to break the lock uh, off or break one of your spokes so that's the idea it's kind of nice little design I, I, th I think it's pretty smart so there's a lot of these little details you might not notice right away when looking at the bike but but uh, I, I appreciate that attention to detail that they included there so you know as I said before I wanted to show you just removing the battery so you're just going to stick this key in here and just turn it and the battery can remove and you can use the same port that's on the bottom of the battery to charge it it's about four hours to charge which really not too bad and then to insert the battery back in on, on this particular style, you actually don't need to have the key in. And I usually just remove it before sticking it back in. And you want to listen to this audible click when you reinsert it. So right now it kind of can look like it's almost connected, but it's actually not secure. I just want to push it down and really hear that, that click. And I know it's good to go. And I won't forget to unlock the rear wheel. Now I should also note that it is a option to add a secondary battery and it would actually mount right here so if you wanted to double the range of the bike you can add a secondary battery or alternatively you could just carry an additional battery with you and just swap it out when uh, when you need it or something like that and that's something that's kind of interesting of finding sometimes people have multiple bikes and the idea that this power pack is interchangeable between the different bikes is is really quite nice. I also wanted to showcase the kickstand which is really sturdy so it's a double kickstand and it just deploys like that. And at this point, the bike is just really solid. And that's really great, especially when you're loading and unloading kids and you could feel pretty confident that the bike's not gonna rock around. So that's, that's a, a really nice feature of the Urban Arrow. And the saddle on the bike is really nice. It's a Cell Royale Rio. It has this nice handle on the back, which is really helpful if you needed to kind of lift the bike up or something like that. It's really designed in part for that purpose. But it's nice and wide, considering you're going to sit more upright, it really provides a good amount of support and they have this Royal Gel. So it's pretty comfortable and I found that this bike is really comfortable for, for a long ride. You have that adjustable seat post so you can get that saddle up to whatever height you might like. If you wanted to add to the comfort, I would recommend considering adding like a suspension seat post or something like that. But but really out of the box, uh, the bike is quite comfortable. So as we come up to the handlebars, I wanna show the display on the bike, and this is basically how you interact with the motor system. Uh, this is the Bosch and Tubia display, and you'll find the same display on the performance line as well as the cargo line version. You just hit the power button here, you just turn it on. It takes a couple of seconds for it to turn on. You'll see the miles per hour. This can also be switched to kilometers per hour pretty easily if that makes sense in your specific area. You have the trip distance, which that can be reset just by holding the reset button down for a couple of seconds. Uh, you just hit the I button. You have the clock here. Hit the I button again, have the max speed. Wow, we got this up to 27.7 miles per hour. I should note that the top speed on this bike 
is 20 miles an hour, 15.5 uh, miles an hour in other places like Europe. Then you have the average speed, which when I hit that reset, it reset this detail, like the average speed, the trip, sp trip time, uh, et cetera. Then you have the range. I think this is really interesting because as you change to the different assistance levels, you're going to impact the range. Now this bike does have a single battery. It does have the option to have a second one, but so eco mode, you see 45 miles as you go up 29, 24, and then 21 miles in the turbo mode. So really max level of assistance. And this one with a cargo line, it's like 400% assistance. So 20 miles is pretty good. And if you get a second battery, you're gonna double that right there. But perhaps if you ride a little bit more efficiently, maybe not as fast, you could see that number raise up a little bit as well. I mean, we were just riding this with another passenger up front. So this might be a little bit lower than what most, most people might see uh, for a lighter passenger. Some other features to note, uh, we have the light here. You just tap this button, that's gonna turn the headlight and taillight on, and you could tap it again, it's gonna turn it off. Pretty simple in that regard. One other feature that you'll find on pretty much all the Bosch bikes is a system called Walk Assist. Basically, you're just gonna tap this button on the top here, and then just hold the plus button. And basically, that's just gonna push the bike forward, and it goes you know, kind of a couple miles an hour. It's not that significant, uh, but it's enough that if you got the bike loaded up and you're pushing it along, you don't feel like you actually have to push the weight of the bike, and that's really nice. Some other details while we're up here, you can see that it has this adjustable stem, which is really nice, so you can kind of dial in your exact ride position that you like. Now, there's uh, a couple of adjustments here, and basically, you can pull the handlebars closer to you or push them forward if you want to be a little bit more forward or you want to be a little bit more upright. I always find that it's good to not be completely upright, although you know different people have different opinions about that. But actually, if you are a little bit forward, you kind of balance your weight and you perhaps improve some of your handling on the bike. But some people argue, and part of the idea with like Dutch type riding is you have a bit more visibility when you're sitting more upright on the bike. Uh, some other details to note, we have, this bike has the Shimano Z brakes, which these brakes are historically reserved for like some serious mountain bikes, like downhill type mountain bikes, but they're kind of fitting on a cargo bike and particularly this one, which is a bit more on the high performance side of things. Standard performance line version is gonna have the Shimano Dior hydraulic brakes. They're all hydraulic disc brakes and they work really well. The drive chain is gonna be consistent at least on the two versions that are available in the US. It's gonna be the Enviolo continually variable transmission. So you have the shifter up front here and you can basically, if you twist it away from you, you're gonna go into a lower gear. If you twist it towards you, you're gonna go into a higher gear. And the idea that it's continually variable, it's, it just basically has infinite steps to it. It's not limited to say eight or nine or 10 specific steps as you would find in a normal derailleur system or internal hub or something like that. And beyond that, it's also really nice because it's very low maintenance. So many riders, particularly riders that are carrying kids and that sort of thing, find this to be helpful because you can shift this when you're not pedaling. So if you come to a stop and you forget to shift down and you wanna start out again, you can easily just twist this away from you, get into that low gear, and you have a really easy time to start out. The challenge with the traditional derailleur is that you can't shift those gears unless you're pedaling. So that's a, that's a slight difference there. And then, uh, yeah, we have these Ergon grips. I always really like these. They provide a little bit extra support for your hands and make it a bit more comfortable and also prevent from really cutting off the circulation in your hand from like a normal cylindrical type grip there. And then there's just really big Dutch bell here, which is, uh, which is very um, Dutch, I guess. So since this is the cargo line version, it has the upgraded Z brakes. These are really like the kind of mountain bike style brakes. It has a 180 millimeter front rotor on there. And these are quad piston brakes. The standard performance line is gonna come with the Dior brakes, but both of them are hydraulic brakes and they really work quite well. But these Z brakes are gonna offer really great performance, especially if you're carrying a heavier load or going down big hills or something like that. And the rear brake has the quad piston Z calipers as well with a 203 rotor, so really quite large and uh, very powerful stopping power. You can see these little fins here. This is kind of like a heat sink, which uh, allows the pads to cool off a bit quicker. 
which, uh, which is a nice feature if you're really pushing it to its limits. So one of the main features of the Urban Arrow family is the box. So it's this EPP material. It's something that's actually often used in automobile bumpers and that sort of thing. And looking at it, it might seem like, oh, it's just styrofoam and it's not that sturdy, but it's actually quite sturdy. You know, again, as I said, it's quite often used in automotive ap applications like car bumpers. And, you know, you got to think that those things need to be pretty strong, but it still actually provides some of that like safety element that, you know, under extreme pressure, it might buckle a little bit, but it's actually will still provide that protection. But I wouldn't be concerned about this providing the main protection because actually there's a metal frame going all the way around. It's kind of like a roll cage, if you will. And I don't want really, to, you know, really alarm you about that sort of thing and thinking that you're riding a race car or something with the roll cage. But the idea of having that extra protection from automobiles and that sort of thing is, uh, is really nice. So this is the standard configuration, which just comes with this single bench, which is good for carrying two kids or potentially one larger kid. Uh, they do have these, this like three point harness. Um, so this is adjustable here. And then it has this kind of quick release system, which is kind of nice. So you can pull these out. You can pull them out at the same time or individually. So there's an optional front bench that sits here, which is good for one larger kid or perhaps another two smaller children if you wanted to. Um, outside of that, you can set up a uh, baby seat carrier. So basically, that uh, there's actually attachments that go on either side here, and uh, you can hold a child seat there, like a car seat, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, outside of that, there's a tarpaulin cover that you can just cover the uh, soft uh, top cover here. And then uh, another actual improvement recently is the rain cover, which also serves as a sun canopy as well, which is, which is really a, a pretty popular accessory, especially in colder environments. So like if you're riding in the cold, it kind of can really retain a lot of the heat. Now, there is also a floor mat for the bottom and thinking about those like colder environments, there's a floor mat for the bottom that allows drainage. Now, the floor of this does allow drainage and I think that sometimes people opt for putting more of a solid sort of uh, rug or carpet on the floor to kind of prevent uh, the air from coming in there and in those colder environments or really wet environments for that matter. So that's something you could consider as well. Outside of that, yeah, there's just loads of different accessories. There's a poncho that actually attaches to the rain cover, which is a really nice accessory. And then there's a rear rack that's available for the bike that's color matched to the frame. So there's a black one as well as a white one. And those can carry quite a bit. And we found that sometimes people will put a child seat in the rear and even put, you know, uh, another four kids up here. So you can be upwards of of five kids. I mean, really, you could potentially even stuff one in the middle if you wanted to. But uh, but for the most part, you know, that's that's kind of the max capacity of what people are generally doing with this. But you can get some ideas of what's possible. But really, skies are kind of the limit here. So. A question that comes up quite often with the Urban Arrow family is, where am I going to put it? I mean, m many people buy this in an urban environment. I mean, it's the kind of part of the name of the brand. So you would think like, you know, how are you going to store it? And the reality is actually a decent amount of people actually store this on the street, even in places like New York City or in Amsterdam where theft uh, is a thing. I think if you actually lock it, you know, properly and use a decent amount of locks, uh, you can do that. However, with one caveat, I, I generally recommend covering it. So when you cover it, people don't know what's under it. They don't know if it's like an old beat up motorcycle or it's a special cargo bike or a snowmobile or who knows what. So they actually have this whole bike cover, which I think is a, is a really nice option and something I'd recommend. Or even perhaps to not even get the one from Urban Arrow and get like a cheaper one, just so it kind of looks beat up, you know? Maybe throw some spray paint on it, who knows? 
people need to get creative, you know, not everybody has a garage or a place to put the bike. So I think if you are locking it up overnight outside, this is a, a great thing to consider there. So yeah, well, anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. And um, if you have experience with this bike, I, I know many people do. Uh, I look forward to knowing what your thoughts are about some of these improvements or what your experience has been with this. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. If you want help getting one of these, and if you're in the States, like we're happy to help you with that. And um, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Well, uh, see you soon.